for. And uh, just amazing stuff, but I ask you what your most valuable possession was. And that's what I really wanted to get on because you've seen a lot, you experienced a lot. And I want you to show people and talk about now this, uh, this possession because you said this is the most valuable possession you have. And value is. And, and in go ahead. Well, value in terms of what it means to you, the most sentimental, not, not in money, but in sentimentalism. So, and that's this piece right here. It looks like a table. You know, what is so special about this table? Tell us. Well, it looks like a table, but it's actually a stool. For uh, about three centuries in England, children sat on stools like this one, called a joint stool, at the dining room table. And there is a Bible hidden in this stool. And the Bible was an illegal Bible at one time. After uh, Henry VIII died and his son died, Mary, Mary Tudor, the daughter, whose nickname, Bloody Mary, came into power, and she announced that she was going to rescind or change all the laws that her Protestant, quote, Protestant father had, uh, had passed. And so she was going back to all the old laws, which included uh, no Bibles in English. And so, uh, immediately after she became queen, the, uh, some of her followers, who were zealot uh, church officers called imperators, went out to the queen's printer, uh, had been the king's printer, and destroyed all the English Bibles that were there. And while they were there, burning the Bibles, they found the list of people who had bought them, the subscription list. And then they went out to everybody's houses. Not everybody on the list. They didn't make it. For about three months, they went out. And there, they asked people to, demanded that people uh, give up their Bibles. And when they did, there was no problem. But if they didn't, they would go in and search. And on the occasion that they found a Bible uh, in a house where people had said they hadn't and their names didn't have it and their names were on the list, uh, they would bring them into one room uh, and put the entire family to death uh, over their Bible, put them to the sword. Then they would take the Bibles out in the street and show them and tell everybody to turn in their Bibles, and they'd rip the Bibles apart and throw them in the street where the horses and everything was coming by. And um, But they had to stop after a while for three reasons. Uh, number one, it's, it was illegal to execute people without a trial. But it was a tumultuous time, a bloody time in England, and without a trial they were killing even children. The second reason they stopped is the Queen told them to. The, the officers of the Queen said, you can't do this. This has given us a bad name. We're trying to start a new government. and." Um, of course, they were planning to eventually get around to killing their enemies. That was just part of running a government in those days. But uh, it was, a, like I said, it was a bloody time. And the third reason was that the imperators, the officers, would come by a day or two after they'd thrown the Bible parts in the street, all the pages and everything, and they'd all be gone. And after a while, they realized that the friends, neighbors, and relatives of the people who were uh, who had been executed would come out at night and gather those pages, gather those pages and launder them as best they could and sew them again into uh, partial Bibles. And that now there was a Bible that no one knew where it was. So, this Bible in this stool is one of those Bibles. Now, why is it hidden in a stool? Well, there were lots of, way, lots of ways to hide Bibles, but this Bible, is just taped loosely in this stool. And there's a story of Henry, not Henry, pardon me, of Benjamin Franklin tells a story in his autobiography about his great, 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 great grandfather who in fact um, would every day pick up a joint stool like this that had a Bible hidden in it and he would turn it uh, and hold it in his lap and read it to his children. Wow. And every day, during the reign of Mary Tudor, he did that. That was a dangerous thing, wasn't it? And so, this Bible was printed 
one year before Mary Tudor came into power. This Bible was printed in 1552, and she became the queen in 1553, so this was an illegal Bible. It is missing one-third of its leaves. It is uh, in random sections. It is in a tight binding uh, done during the 1550s, and um, it is bloodstained. I'm pretty certain this is one of the Bibles that we just described. Um, so, you know, history is, is uh, only as good as we remember it, but here is a Bible that is probably my most precious possession in this world. And uh, uh, I love to read it to people. I read from this Bible. Sometimes when I've just told the story we do, I get someone, I arrange with someone to, to wait outside and when I start reading to knock real loud and come in and say, what's going on in here? And it, that's a teachable moment. Is there a particular translation that is? Or? Oh, this is, a, this is English. This is what is called the Great Bible. And it is a, it is a revision of William Tyndale's translation that was edited by Miles Coverdale. Now these are people who suffered under various people to do the Bible. People think, well, Coverdale died of old age. Yes, Tyndale was martyred, but Coverdale died of old age uh, preaching to large crowds, but he lost his wife. His wife was caught during the reign of Mary Tudor and executed. Wow. And tortured. Wow. She would not recant her husband's beliefs. Well, do you have a website with uh, a lot of this information? Not really. I'm working on it. But okay. uh, my Facebook page is, uh, you can get it from a website address, from a URL. It's www.biblehistory.us. And that will take you to my Enduring Word Museum. Facebook page, which I, I look at every few days and make some changes. Okay. There's some films there. And things. So BibleHistory.us. BibleHistory.us. Okay, everyone, get to the site, and this is part one. In part two, we're going to actually see some more of the artifacts that you have. You have a little uh, exhibit set up. We'll see that. Uh, but this is amazing. I encourage everyone to get Fox's Books of Mortars. You can pick it up at any major bookstore. It's a very popular book to just show you how far we've come. Uh, to get the freedom to have the scriptures and be able to read them openly in public uh, or even to have them in our house. Is there anything you want to say at the end of this uh, part before we can go to the next part? Get your Bible out. Open it and expect to meet God there. Great. I mean, that's, that's my message. The kingdom of God is at hand and you can approach the kingdom of God through the word of God, the written word of God, if you'll open your heart and as you read and, and ask God to show you what, how to understand what you're reading, the, uh, the Spirit of God will make the pages come alive. Wow, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for showing us uh, this amazing possession you have here, and we'll look forward to seeing the rest of the amazing things you have in a little while in another video. And uh, until then, everybody, this is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries, and uh, definitely check out his website. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. All right. Seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's way.